You're listening to the number one podcast for nonprofit leaders, getting your nonprofit fully funded. This is the Fundraising Masterminds Podcast. We know every organization is going to have financial needs, but when we talk about fully funded, we're talking about helping you that you're not having to worry about, are we going to be able to make the next payroll? Are we going to be able to purchase that new computer? We want to make sure for you that Fully Funded allows you and enables you to be able to do your mission and do it effectively. That's what we want to help you do to the maximum degree possible. That's Fully Funded. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Fundraising Masterminds podcast. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about capital campaigns. And this is an interesting topic. It actually came up recently. Uh, I've got Jim here as my co-partner in crime doing the Fundraising Masterminds together. Yep. Welcome, Jim. Thanks. Good and to be here. We are. Uh, we actually just uh, put together a proposal for uh, a ministry recently for a capital campaign. And as we were putting together this proposal, we thought, you know, this would make a really great podcast episode. So we are going to bring some of the information to you. I know in the nonprofit space, uh, a lot of people hear the word campaign. It's usually associated with like a fundraiser campaign, right? And uh, But a capital campaign is a little different. Can you explain the differences between fundraiser campaign and a capital campaign? Yeah. Well, generally, a campaign is an overarching effort right. to raise X amount of dollars for a particular project or program. When we focus in on the capital campaign side of things, we're talking about capital improvements. So that could be remodeling, purchasing a piece of land, purchasing a building, right. doing any kinds of capital improvement. That's typically what we're talking about with a capital campaign. Churches are very big with capital campaigns. And we're talking about if they want to build a gymnasium, if they wanted to add another wing to their uh, adult yeah. education center or their uh, the wing to their Christian school. Those are all capital improvement type of efforts. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christian organizations do campaigns, so it's a it's a targeted effort to achieve a goal. I was mentioning before we got on that the Jesus film is getting ready to yeah. move into a, a really campaign exciting. for a new endeavor that they're doing that's going to probably be in the neighborhood of $150 million or more for wow. their campaign. And so every organization can have a campaign, yeah. uh, but specifically a capital campaign has to do with capital improvements. Right. Christian schools would be another Christian example. schools are terrific. Yep. That's a great example of capital campaigns. Yeah. So uh, the main distinguishing fact between a campaign and a capital campaign is that a campaign is like kind of a one and done. Like right. we are raising $40,000 to buy a truck. Right. That's and right. Did the 40,000, we bought the truck and it's done. That's right. Capital campaign is like a multi-year long yeah, process. Yeah. Well, and it, it can be one and done in the sense that you're still, you're raising it for something to be done. Yeah. But what ends up happening is for many capital campaign is that they overlap and they, they continue on. So right. when a church, as an example, is starting a capital campaign, they will fund a certain portion of that building. And then that, you know, you're always growing. So one capital campaign will start as another one is ending and they continue to go on that cycle as they have their, their capital improvement needs. Before we get into talking about how to do a capital campaign, I would love it if you would mind subscribing to this podcast because we release weekly podcast episodes for nonprofit leaders uh, on all things nonprofit. We talk about development, tips. We talk about fundraising tips. We talk about um, how to actually get your nonprofit fully funded. And what we mean by that is, you know, uh, accomplishing the dream that you have for your nonprofit. A lot of times people say, well, what do you mean by fully funded? Uh, that seems kind of abstract. Well, I mean, like, what do you, what does your nonprofit exist to do? That's what we want to help you do uh, to the maximum degree possible, because we believe that anything is possible if you put God first. And we are just 
here to help you uh, realize the maximum potential of your nonprofit. And we're leveraging uh, Jim's 38 years of experience working for Crew and my 20 years working for Fundeasy to bring you some of the best advice uh, and training on the market to you. We know every organization is going to have financial needs and that's, that's a given. If you're a growing yeah. organization, and you are going to have financial needs. But when we talk about fully funded, we're talking about helping you ensure that you're not having to worry about when is, are we gonna be able to make the next payroll? Right. Are we gonna be able to purchase that new computer that we need so de desperately? We wanna make sure for you that fully funded allows you and enables you to be able to do your mission and do it effectively. Yep. You're always gonna be dreaming big dreams and you're always gonna need money for those big dreams, but at least your basic essential needs yep. are those covered, that's right. fully funded. Well, if you want to learn more about how we work with you to get you fully funded, you could check out our organization. It's fundraisingmasterminds.net. But let's get into today's topic. Right. Okay, today's topic is a capital campaign. So there are actually five phases right. to a capital campaign. And this is spread over several years, which oh, is absolutely. like three to five At years. At least three to five years, yeah. In fact, the, the rule of thumb is that most people have trouble seeing past one presidential term. So mm -hmm. three to four is very standard, but depending on how much you have to raise, sometimes nowadays many capital campaigns going to five years. Right. So these five phases are really kind of broken up into um, like there's a research component to right. it. Then there's a private funding component. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a public funding component. And that's right. really kind of broken into two sections of right. the private funding. Right. And then we have like a follow up component right. to it. Right. So uh, let's get into phase one, which is the research. So we call yeah. that research phase the feasibility study. That's right. And uh, you actually have done several uh, capital campaigns for churches and uh, Christian schools. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you go through in the feasibility study for a capital campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Well, feasibility study is so important. It's it's just like it sounds. You want to determine the feasibility of your being able to have a capital campaign right. and sustain that over three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. That means you've got to look at every aspect of it. Number one, do you have the right message? Have you developed a case for support? Number two, do you have individuals, especially donors, who are going to come alongside and help undergird and support that? Then do you have the people that can help to provide the leadership and logistics to pull off a capital campaign. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, you wanna make sure, do you have the infrastructure? Do you have the computers? Do you have the equipment? Do you have the software? Mm -hmm. Everything that it takes to sustain a capital campaign to three to four years. Mm -hmm. So those elements are essential. And a feasibility study utilizes a, a first of all, a questionnaire of assessing essentially it's an internal audit right. assessing what your ability to be able to pull off a capital campaign so right. knowing what your hardware what your software what your social media what your exposure what your marketing what your pr what kinds of things that you do but right. then we do a mail survey to the total donor base that you currently have determining their awareness their understanding of the need and it's out there and then getting a temperature of their willingness and ability to help financially. And then of course, mm -hmm. we do individual surveys, which is extremely important. We'll sit down with that critical few, that 20% that bring in 80% of the dollars and find out, are they aware of the need that you have for this campaign? And are they willing to fund that and at what level and what degree. Now we know that when we do an interview like this, that people are generally with very little knowledge, they're only going to be at about 75 to 80% of what their capability is. Mm -hmm. And then with a lot of public awareness with the right challenge, we'll get to them to a hundred or more percent mm -hmm. of their ability. So the feasibility phase is typically a go or no go phase. Right. So you're either prepared and ready to do a capital campaign or you're not. And 
I can't tell you, I have had more than a handful of organizations and ministries stop after the feasibility study because they just don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the donor base, they don't have the support, and all those things are so important. Yeah, it's important to know that a startup nonprofit can't just do a capital campaign. Right, that's right. right. Yeah, You have to have some kind of base uh, foundation to do that. Of support, infrastructure, everything. Yeah. And that's actually, you know, what happened with our proposal uh, that we did recently was um, once we were explaining this to them, they realized, you know, I don't think we have right. a, uh, a base to do a capital campaign. So we need to work on getting that base. And that's, I think we'll get to that as we get to the end of this episode. So if you're in a position where you feel like, oh, gee, I don't know if this is going to be relevant for me. I thought I was going to be able to do a capital campaign, but uh, I don't know if I have the base uh, to do a capital campaign. Well, hang with us to the end. I think it would be important for you to understand what a capital campaign is first. Uh, And then at the end, we're going to show you kind of like depending on where you are, if you're feasible or not feasible, uh, we're going to have some practical ways for you to become feasible if you're not feasible. And then, of course, if you are feasible, uh, we're going to give you some practical ways of how you can move forward with a capital campaign. Yeah. Just Um, because you're not feasible doesn't mean you can't continue and can't at least take some steps. And that's from what I understand. That's what we're doing with the proposal that was submitted was that they, oh. they aren't feasible, but there are some steps that they can still take yeah. to get themselves funded. Yeah. So we'll talk about that towards the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the second phase after you get through the feasibility study, which again, how long would you say the feasibility study lasts for? Well, generally it's about three months, about 90 days, yeah. uh, sometimes a little bit longer depending okay. on any of you. So once we get through that 90 days, then the second phase, the leadership awareness program. So Jim, could you unpack yeah. what's involved in this one? Absolutely. Well, there's two things that are vital to any success of a capital campaign. That's people and money. And what you want to begin to do at this point is you want to begin to develop a structure that is going to sustain and support your capital campaign. A capital campaign is built on many people. Mm-hmm. And so in this phase, this is when you want to recruit a chair and a co-chair and and other leadership positions for the capital campaign. You'll be challenging those people. And not only are you asking them for a commitment of time, but you're also asking them for a commitment of money. So they're going to give financially, and you're going to ask them to commit their time. And what we mean by time really is we're going to need to build a structure, an infrastructure of individuals who are going to be challenging other people. Mm -hmm. This is a friends challenging friends effort. That's the success. Just as our perfect vision dinner is built on table hosts, friends inviting friends, a Mm -hmm. capital campaign is built on friends actually challenging friends. So number one, we recruit our leadership and we challenge those people. We'll start oftentimes with those individuals that are closest to the nucleus and our concentric circles of influence. Our critical few, those people who already help us, we'll be asking them to make a commitment. The overall goal in this phase is to get at least 10 percent of the overall goal so if you've got a million dollar goal you might want to get a hundred thousand dollars from the leadership and then ultimately you want to try and get anywhere between 20 and 30 percent over your leadership phase. So your chair is going to challenge co-chairs. Co-chairs are going to challenge the secondary level and those secondary level people will challenge the tertiary level individuals. So all, yeah. all those campaign uh, phases are all built in this leadership phase. And these people are going to be pace setters for you. So when we eventually roll out to the public phase, we're going to be using these people as ambassadors. They're going to be sharing their stories. They're mm-hmm. going to be sharing what it got got them to this point where they made sacrificial gifts this reflects very much if you go back to scripture this reflects a lot of how david built the temple mm-hmm. he started with giving himself he didn't ask others to give until he gave himself mm-hmm. so he gave of his resources first and that prompted others to give this is exactly how a capital campaign is built is leaders giving their gifts and that stimulating motivating others to give we oftentimes call this the private phase in addition to the leadership phase because a lot of this is being done 
behind the scenes before it's rolled out publicly. Now, what if I'm in an organization where the leadership is not wealthy? Right. Then right. how do we do this? Does this, does this only work if yeah. we have wealthy leaders? Well, once again, w when we say leaders, we don't want to confuse that with those individuals who are staff members or potentially even board members, but mostly staff members and things. Hopefully, if you have crafted and created your board properly, you do have individuals on your board who are donors and do have wealth. And, and those individuals will be challenged. But remember, the next step then is to go to that critical few. So you are going to your critical few, those people who are that 20% to bring in 80% of the dollars. So at this point, you are definitely moving towards individuals who do have wealth. Now, again, it, it's, it's all relative. The 20% for Campus Crusade for Christ is different than the 20% of my neighborhood pregnancy center who has a budget of $220,000 where right. Campus Crusade has a budget of $750 million. So it's relative, but you're, you're looking at trying to uh, move into the, those individuals who do have some wealth and are already giving to you. Here's a question of how do you know how much you should be raising in a capital campaign? Oh, like, you know, do I just shoot for the question. moon or do I just pick a random <laughs> number or yeah, is that yeah. part of the feasibility study? Uh, it is. Oh, absolutely. In fact, the feasibility study will be one of a number of elements that will help you determine how large your goal is. Because I have seen organizations that they do shoot for the moon and they say, you know, I, I want to raise $10 million. Well, we do the feasibility study and they're lucky if they could raise $2 million based on the feasibility study. So with that, you determine one of two things. Either you wait till you have the individuals to be able to have a $10 million capital campaign, mm -hmm. or you move on being more realistic with your goal and setting a $2 million goal based on what you've got at this point in time. And you'll right. have to make a determination on that. Now, typically, and this is not a standard, but it, it's a fairly good indicator, is that your capital campaign generally is about three times what your annual budget is. Hmm. So if my annual budget okay. is $250,000, my capital campaign should be somewhere between seven fifty dollars and a million dollars for a capital campaign. So hmm. there's a realistic seven fifty, dollars and then there's a million yeah. face stretching goal. Now, if, I, if I've got a $3 million organization, then I can get typically a nine to $10 million capital campaign. So the second phase is really uh, that private funding where we're looking to set up the leadership structure uh, where you're going to have your key people lead out with their first private gifts. So these are the guys that are really... They're your pace setters. They're setting the tone for everybody else. Right. right. Um, so then we move into the public phase. That's right. And the public phase is really broken into two parts. That's right. Now, the, this, this next phase, as you said, is broken up into two components. We're talking about the public relations side of things. We just spent the last three to four months building our leadership structure right. and getting our pace setting gifts. Now we're starting to roll this out to the masses, mm -hmm. everyone else. So for a church, it's the rest of the congregation. For a Christian school, it may be rolling out to all the other parents and friends, grandparents, mm -hmm. everyone else in there. And for a... Um, you know, for a regular nonprofit organization, it might be the rest of your mailing list. So mm -hmm. you're going to incorporate email marketing, you're going to incorporate social media, and you're going to incorporate direct mail. And by now, you should have clearly defined what your case is, what what it is you're trying to do. Are we trying to purchase a piece of land? Are we trying to build on a land piece of land we've already purchased? Mm -hmm. Are we trying to add an extra wing to a Christian school or a church. Mm -hmm. All those kinds of things should be clearly defined. So the first component of that is the public relations. The second component is adding to that an event that is really your kickoff event from the standpoint of right. kicking off the next three years because you're gonna expect three years of giving from this point oh, wow. forward. Yeah. So you're okay. going to be asking everyone along this process to yeah. make three-year um, three commitments. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when you're talking about 
make someone say your lead gift, your chair giving 10% of that or your structure, $100,000, that would be over three years. Mm -hmm. And so it, that makes it more realistic from that standpoint. You're gonna be asking these people to do that as well too. And your kickoff event is really the perfect vision dinner. And so in these months, and it, once again, you're looking at about three to four months in this public phase as well, too. You're right. building momentum. So if you, can, if you can picture a volcano starting to rumble and build and eventually it Explodes. blows. Exactly. And that is your perfect vision dinner. You're kicking off your campaign with a celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, we set a goal of $750,000. We have $1 million worth of commitments. Hmm. We have a lot to celebrate. So your event right. captures those commitments, but it also celebrates what's already been done. So you've got all these commitments in this leadership phase that you had. Mm -hmm. You're presenting that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a $750,000 goal. We raised over yeah. 150,000 or 200,000 in that leadership phase. All we need now is a remaining portion. Yeah. Will you help put us over the top? Yeah. at that point in time. Right. And that's what that campaign is. So phase one is marketing. Phase two is creating this perfect structure. Yeah. And so you've got all these commitments. Yeah. Uh, actually, as you were explaining it to me, I started to imagine a visual. And do you remember uh, a few years ago online, there was this ice bucket challenge? Oh, sure. I like, participated <laughs> in that. Yeah, I think yeah. I did it too. Yeah, absolutely. My kids made me do it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. But you remember how that was? It was like there was an ice bucket challenge and right. the, the person would pour ice water over their head right. and then they would say, I challenge Jim right. Dempsey and uh, Jason Galasinski, right. you know, and right. then you would kind of almost look like a fool if you yeah. didn't do it. And of know? course you had to videotape it and post it on social media. Right. Yeah. Which ultimately kind of, you know, then it, it, you have to challenge your correct. friends yeah. and it just yeah. keeps going. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're doing that's in the right. leadership phase. That was the visual that kind of came to me yeah. Yeah. is you're, you're taking your key hitters right and you're asking right. them to challenge their friends that's and they're right. asking them to challenge their friends that's right that's the private phase right but then you know when we get to the public phase and we have the perfect vision dinner the volcano is now it's like that it, ice bucket it, challenge it a, gone viral. forces all <laughs> building up and then it, it yeah. explodes yeah it's like you just that's have right. all these people yeah. Yeah. doing the challenge yeah. it's and going and, viral we would call that now yeah right. exactly and so, yeah, that's the exciting, mm -hmm. that's the exciting part. Right. So it's important to know that this public phase is going to be a three-year commitment, but it's one event. Yeah, it's not three vision dinners, but it's one event that kicks things off. And um, it's, it's important that we try to raise as much money in the private phase oh, yes. uh, as possible. Right. I mean, you said at least 10 to 20%, right. but if you can get to 50 or 60%, oh, it's even better. It, it, oh, even better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's yeah. just, that's going to help rocket the final yeah. phase. Yeah. Uh, you know, more. the more that you raise privately, the better it is publicly. Yeah, for sure. And so now in phase five, right. we're getting into the follow-up phase. And this phase is really critical because this is where we're actually going to be following up with people throughout right. the five year, make sure that they're keeping their commitments. Right, right, um, right. And actually collecting the money. Yeah. Yeah. And that is over a three to five year period. Yeah. Well, your comment is actually more brilliant than you probably even realize. It is, it's so easy for individuals to make a commitment. Yeah. But the tough part is fulfilling that commitment. Right. And it's sort of a, a rub that I have with some capital campaign companies out there because they get their money up front, they get all these commitments, and then they're essentially out the door and they don't stay with you for three years. They move on to the next capital campaign. And this phase is so important because the last thing you would want is to get a million dollars of commitments but only get 20 to 30 to 40% yeah. of those commitments in the door. So you have got to really focus in on this fifth phase to ensure that you've got communication, frequent communication, that stories are out there, that you're sharing in the success of people who have not only fulfilled their commitment, that maybe God even provided beyond what they intended right. and continue to share that because you would like to get, normally what we see, Jason, is about 92% or more fulfillment on a capital campaign. That's what you want. You want 
want 90 plus in fulfillment of campaign. Yeah. Unfortunately, as much as we would love 100 percent, that that is is kind of rare to actually get that unless you've got mm-hmm. some, you know, real large gifts that went over. But if you can get 90 percent or plus, you're doing extremely well in yeah. that last phase. Well, at the beginning of this episode, we talked about the eligibility of a capital campaign versus the non eligibility. And through we determined that through the feasibility and maybe you're listening to this and you're like, wow, I didn't realize there was so much involved with a capital campaign. Uh, how do I get eligible? Well, we could walk you through the process of becoming eligible. And that was actually, uh, the proposal that, you know, we talked about as an example, that's the Mm -hmm. route that this person decided to go is we're going to take a few years to build up a base. And then once we have that base, then we can launch a capital campaign. And the way that we do that is we use the perfect vision in our strategy and we use the perfect vision in our strategy in the capital campaign. We talked about that, uh, but we can use just the perfect vision in our strategy uh, to build your base, right? And the way that we do that, the best way that you can do that is you can sign up for our perfect vision in our course. We offer it twice a year. It's a 20 week course where we walk you through from zero knowledge all the way to actually doing your first vision dinner. We walk you through step by step of how to get your table host, how to build your audience, um, how to put on the program, the right aspects of the program. Uh, and we typically see, you know, anywhere from 80 to 150,000 raised in the first vision dinner, sometimes more, sometimes less depends on the situation, but give or take, you know, that creates your base. Right. And then from there, we're able to go to year two, which is we take that base and we're able to get the friends inviting friends to kick in. And we're able to grow your foundation to where we have raised, you know, 150, 200,000, maybe 300,000 year two. And but the idea is that we have more people. We have the friends inviting their friends uh, coming. And in year three, we've got all those people inviting their friends. You can actually get quite a bit funded uh, by yeah. doing that way. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, you gave an example of an organization who helps women get out of the sex trafficking um, world. Right. And um, this when you started working with them, you know, they had a big vision. Right. And you could have said, well, we could do a capital campaign, but they, they didn't right. have anything. It was right. just a couple. That's right. Uh, and so what you did was you did a series of vision dinners. Right. Uh, and the one that we just went to a few months ago right. was um, their six. Yes. And their goal was to raise $800,000. Right. Right. So that's an example. I saw it literally with my own eyes. I could probably put a picture on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, where you saw... You know, they started small right. and then they built and built and built. And now they're, they had a room of 900 people right. with a goal of 800,000. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that took six years. Yeah. Yeah. So they are actually in a, probably a really good state where they could be eligible for a capital And they campaign. could, absolutely. Because right, right now they're talking about stables. They're talking about another ranch house to right. build uh, for uh, the families and things like right. that. Absolutely. What I love, Jason, about the Perfect Vision Dinner more than anything is that it surfaces that 20%, again, mm-hmm. that critical few. And those are the same people that ultimately you're going to be challenging for your leadership phase. Yeah. So the dinner surfaces is that when we first did that with the um, human trafficking organization, the first dinner was a dream, 100%. Picture in your mind a piece of property, a ranch house, stables, uh, homes for these ladies. All that was dreams. You saw year six and you saw a lot of those things constructed already. That was because of the perfect vision and strategy. And that's exactly what we want to do for you guys. I mean, that's, that's what we mean by fully funded. Honestly, Uh, we, we mean like, imagine your full vision of what you want to do. Uh, No restraints. That's what the Perfect Vision Dinner model can do. So if you're interested in learning about the Perfect Vision Dinner model, you can check it out at fundraisingmasterminds.net. And if you do a gala or a dinner or a dessert or a banquet every year and you're thinking, well, how does my gala compare to the Perfect Vision Dinner model? We actually created a survey. Uh, We'll put a QR code on the screen uh, for that. And uh, you can scan this QR code and it will take you directly to a survey where we ask you 14 questions uh, and we give you a score Mm -hmm. and we kind of compare 
how you're doing compared to our model. Um, and you'll find out, you know, whether your dinner is performing the way that it should be performing. But either way, the perfect vision dinner model is a great way to build that base. Right. Right. That's and right. then once you have that base, then you're able to leverage that 20% that bring in 80% of the dollars. Right. Those are your people yeah. that you do phase two with. That's right. That's your leadership exactly. phase. That's right? right. So you, that's how you build those relationships. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how right. you get to know those people. Right. Um, and then of course, uh, you're, you're now feasible for right. a capital campaign. Right. That's right. Now, if you're listening to this video and you're thinking, okay, uh, I don't know if I need to, I think I can pass the feasibility study. Uh, how do I move forward with a capital campaign? Well, one of the best ways to move forward with a capital campaign is to hire the fundraising mastermind team and the fundraising mastermind team will come alongside of you. We will give you a proposal that's specific to you and we will actually walk you through step-by-step -step of this process of doing a capital campaign. So if you're interested in that, there is a link in the description of this video. We'll also put a QR code on the screen. You can click that QR code and it will take you to our website where you can get more information and you can reach out to us. But we would love to get in touch with you and we would love to share uh, how our team can work with you to help your organization achieve its capital campaign goals. Well, the Fundraising Masterminds team is established and set up and ready to help you when you are ready for a capital campaign mm -hmm. or simply the perfect vision dinner strategy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We gave you kind of a big, broad overview of how to do a capital campaign. Well, I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. Just write us a little comment and let us know your thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the phases, let us know. Jim and I will review those comments and we'll get back to you. Uh, and again, if you have not subscribed to this podcast, I would highly recommend you do because we release a weekly episode for nonprofit leaders and we would love to get that material into your hands. Right. Jim, any final words that you want to say to our audience about capital campaigns? Well, just a capital campaign is not something that you venture into lightly. Right. You've got to make sure that you pass the feasibility test. And when you are ready, you can develop that structure and it, everything can move smoothly. And that's where Fundraising Masterminds comes in yeah. is to come alongside and help in that way. Well, again, we love to work with you and we just so appreciate you tuning into this podcast. Thanks again for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.